Welcome to Electron Online. In the previous two examples, we were given certain initial conditions and certain numbers. But in this example, we're only given variables. We're given an incline that has an angle of phi and a projectile which is fired off at some initial velocity v initial at an angle theta with respect to the horizontal. What we're trying to find is we're trying to find the distance x on the horizontal plane here on the horizontal line how far will it go in this direction in terms of v initial, theta, and phi? Of course, the relationship between x and y can be found by taking the tangent of phi, or y equals x times the tangent of phi. The approach to solve this problem will be the same as the approach that we had before in the first two examples, but in this case, we're going to have to eliminate time because there's no time given anywhere and we're trying to eliminate time. But again, we're going to come up with the two equations, the kinematics, in the x and the y direction. Starting with the y direction. Again, we can write that y equals y sub naught plus v sub naught in the y direction times time plus one half a in the y direction times time squared. Plugging in what we know based upon our parameters that we're given is that y will be equal to zero because we're going to assume that the initial height is zero, plus v initial in the y direction, which will be v initial times the sine of theta, the angle of the direction of the projectile initially with respect to the horizontal line, times t minus, because a here will be the acceleration due to gravity, we take half of that, so minus 4.9 t squared. And that's as far as we can go at this moment. The next thing we want to do is, let's see here. Mm, let's go ahead and try with the x direction equation. So starting with the x direction equation, we can write that x equals x sub naught plus v sub naught in the x direction times time plus one half a in the x direction times time squared. But again, there's not going to be any forces in the x direction, therefore no acceleration in the x direction, this goes to zero, and we can assume that the initial direction, the initial distance in the x direction is zero as well, which leaves us with the equation x equals v initial in the x direction times time, and we can substitute for that v initial in the x direction, that would be v initial times the cosine of theta times t, or we can write that t is equal to x divided by v initial times the cosine of theta. Let's go ahead and substitute this equation in our first equation, both for t squared and for t to the first power. Also, what we may want to do is instead of writing y here, because after all, we're looking for x, we're not looking for y, we can also make this substitution in here. So we can write this as x times the tangent of phi is equal to 0 plus v initial times the sine of theta times t, which can be written as x divided by v initial times the cosine of theta, minus 4.9 times this quantity, x over v initial times the cosine of theta quantity squared. I can see that luckily we can simplify some things. First of all, this v sub naught cancels this v sub naught. Thus we can write that x times the tangent of phi is equal to x times d. Well, the sine divided by cosine is the tangent, but this will be the tangent of theta, minus 4.9 times x squared divided by v initial squared times the cosine square of theta. What can we do next? We have an x here to the first power, we have an x squared there. It looks like we're going to end up with a quadratic equation, but since we don't have a constant term, it's not as bad as it might seem initially. But what we're going to do is we're going to move this over to the other side and write it as zero is equal to x times tangent of theta minus the tangent of phi. Notice when I bring this over here, that becomes negative. I can factor out an x, I get this. And here I have 
minus x squared times 4.9 divided by v initial squared times the cosine square of theta. Now notice we have this minus this equals zero, but both terms have an x in it, so I can factor out an x. So this can be written as zero is equal to x times, here we have the tangent of theta minus the tangent of phi. I'll put that in parentheses because I factor out an x. And then minus x times, here we have 4.9 over v initial squared times the cosine square of theta. And now we can use our normal algebra trick. Since we have a product set equal to zero, x times what's in the brackets here, either x equals zero or what's inside the brackets equals zero. So we can say that x equals zero or what's in the brackets equals zero. So let me go over here because I need some more board space. Zero equals the quantity tangent of theta minus the tangent of phi minus x times 4.9 divided by v initial squared times the cosine square of theta. All right, now all we have to do is solve that equation for x and we have our solution. Moving that to the other side of the equal sign, we get a positive x times 4.9 over v initial squared times the cosine squared of theta. That's an s here. Multiplied, let's see here, we move that across now, equals the tangent of theta minus the tangent of phi. And finally, what we can do here is we can multiply this times this and divide by 4.9, or x equals v initial squared cosine square of theta times the tangent of theta minus the tangent of phi, all divided by 4.9. And this equation would be valid for any projectile motion on any incline. In other words, the horizontal distance reached will be equal to the initial velocity squared times the cosine squared of the angle at which it's directed times the quantity of the tangent of theta minus the tangent of phi, all divided by 4.9. And so here you have the general equation of how far a projectile will go in the horizontal direction if it's fired on an incline. And that's how it's done.